Hey everyone, welcome to learning about mortgages. Now we're into 2023. The market has, we're going to use the word changing. It's going up and it's down. It's fluctuating when it comes to interest rates and it comes to whether to buying or sell. And is now a good time to do it or shouldn't you? Should you wait? I'm starting to see that people are starting to make some changes as 2023 comes around in regards to whether they should be buying. So I brought on the expert with me. Jill Fisher is a mortgage broker and she's going to share with us in regards to what people can be looking for when either they're refinancing, looking for a first home, or honestly, just house hunting because we're looking at the spring market. Jill, let's uh, start off with... Uh, with you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, you like really let in there with the expert, hey? Um, yeah. I am obviously a mortgage broker in Lloydminster. I have been a mortgage broker in Lloydminster since 2011 now. So what I do full-time, it allows me to work full-time from home, which I love to do. Um, I like to say that I am a first-time home buyer expert because that's primarily who I end up working with. Although over the last couple of years, um, people have really started to, I feel like, become informed as like within regards to their mortgages and um, renewals have become a really big part of my book. Um, people aren't just taking that letter anymore from the bank and signing and being like, Man, this is what I'm supposed to do. They're doing their homework, they're doing their research. And so um, that is also something that I very much like talking about because like in regards to renewals, which I know isn't really your wheelhouse right now, but banks tend to take advantage of homeowners lack of either education or just like the overwhelming part of that side of their life that comes with renewals. They just don't, people just don't care or they get overwhelmed by it. And so then they just sign on that dotted line. But yeah, people are uh, starting to pay attention to that, especially with today's interest rates. I mean, when you bought your house, if you bought your house five years ago, you were paying just under 3% and interest rates now are closer to five. So people are definitely out there shopping. So, you know, you mentioned the renewal process, not directly in my wheelhouse, but let's take a look at that because it is so much simpler when you get that letter from the bank here, it's time to renew. Here's your rate. Let's just keep on going. It's simple. Use the word easy peasy. Just jump right in and don't worry about it. We got to take care of you because so many people are so used to that. And going back even just 10 years, it was much easier to do that than to spend time to shop for the rate. So advice would be shop, see what's out there, see what shop. options there are. I mean, and absolutely it is easier. I mean, if you are moving your mortgage, if you are yeah, for renewal, you're moving it to another lender, it is requalifying again. So we're looking at job letters, pay stubs, credit all of that kind of stuff. There are situations where you are stuck with what you're stuck with. However, I will still help you negotiate with your bank because again, they're sending out letters that aren't competitive. Once they realize you're doing your homework, they often very quickly are like, oh, maybe we do need to play a little bit of ball. And so I still will help people through that process. I don't really get anything from it other than you know, doing a good deed for the day, still making sure people are getting the right rate for them. But yeah, if you are, if we are moving you, it is, it is requalifying again. So it's definitely not the easiest way out. However, the amount of money you're saving by moving is often like obviously worth it by thousands of dollars. So it uh, makes it worth it. You know, you mentioned savings and that is huge when it's a little bit of extra work, but mm -hmm. the savings are there. Flashback to some of the competitive markets, uh, housing markets from early last year, where people were paying way over asking price, where but they had a lower interest rate. But now we have higher interest rates and people are getting close to asking price. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more work, but people have to understand that higher interest rate, or it's not necessarily a bad thing either, right? You can still mm -hmm. qualify for a good home. Yes. Um Yes, you can. Um, I don't find that our market has softened too much in price. Like, again, that's your, I don't, I'm not finding a lot of people having trouble qualifying for what they want. Obviously, yes, the qualifying rate is higher. The stress test is higher. I'm not seeing a lot of the, that people can't get into anything now. Um, even the people that want to get into what they want to get into, I feel like we're really running parallel to you know, the stress test for what housing prices are. Um, again, our market is not what the media portrays 
housing market to be, which is nice. I find it's quite balanced here, which means that even though interest rates have increased, people are still getting into homes um, and we're not really running into issues with that here, I would say. Right. And so just for clarification for here, we're talking about the Lloydminster area and actually yeah. even fluctuating out into a good portion of Alberta and Saskatchewan mm-hmm. where things have stayed yeah. stable. Job market is good. There's mm-hmm. plenty of work for people and mm-hmm. the home prices are holding steady because the buyers are now coming back. With mm-hmm. them coming back, mm-hmm. we have to look at, I'm going to say it, the first time home buyers, they were the mm-hmm. ones that seemed to get scared because they thought 2% interest rate. Wow. That's that's great. Oh, 3%. I'm scared. Now they're sitting in the high fours and near mm-hmm. five mm-hmm. and they think it's the end of the world, but honestly, it's really not. Let's just use say a 2% variant. Um, what would you say on average is the differential in what somebody could afford um, if they were qualified, say at 300 for a $300,000 purchase at 2% as opposed to if it jumped up to 4%, would that be a big difference for them? Well, you're going to ask me math. Hey, um, Payments wise, offhand, offhand is always good. Offhand. Okay. So like super rough offhand, bad math. It's probably going to be about $200 more a month, I would say per hundred thousand dollars. So if you're buying a $200,000 property, yeah, you're looking at about probably $400 more a month at today's interest rate versus like the 2% interest rate. We're going to double check that number before we make this the final cut for the video. (laughs) But um, yeah, I would say it's like, obviously $400 a month is a lot more interest rate wise, but I always say rent is a hundred percent interest, right? So you got to, you got to pay to live somewhere generally, unless you get to live at home for free, you're still going to be putting money into equity. You're still going to, you know, be paying down principal. Like my first mortgage 12 years ago, I guess now was 6.1%. And we thought it was a steal. So like historically, these four and a half below five rates are still lower than historical interest rates. It's just not as low as what we've been used to the last, say, five years. You were talking in regards to bond markets, because obviously things are always fluctuating, right? Mm -hmm. We see in in the media, Bank of Canada raised interest rates. Okay, well, Mm -hmm. everyone thinks doom and gloom. But it didn't actually mean that mortgage rates went up. I think the last rate increase, we saw a slight decrease in the mortgage rates. Well, correct. kind of. Okay. So the Bank of Canada raised interest rates. If you are a variable rate mortgage holder, adjustable rate mortgage holder, yes, your interest rates increased. We are not doing a lot of variable rates right now. It doesn't make sense to. You are paying more in interest if you are in a variable rate than if you take a fixed rate today. So we are doing a lot of fixed rate mortgages. A lot of three-year fixed rate mortgages is what I am doing. That being said, when the Bank of Canada announced that they were doing an increase, bond markets decreased. And so fixed rates actually went down slightly when the Bank of Canada made their interest rate announcement. And that kind of signaled that the market believes that the Bank of Canada is done raising rates And that they think that we're going to kind of stabilize at that four and a half range, let's say. That being said, last week, the U.S. Federal Reserve raised their interest rates. They also said they weren't done raising interest rates, which made bond yields spike a little bit. So um, our market kind of changed again just within the last two weeks. I would expect probably to see some fixed rates increase in the next little bit. But, you know, last week I said I didn't think they were going to increase. So it just, you know, things change daily. (laughs) It's like, we can't predict the future. People ask us, well, for for me, what's the market going to be? Well, we can give an idea, but like you say, it can change um, extremely quickly. Mm -hmm. If people are coming to you, they Mm -hmm. can lock in a rate. How long are those rates good for? Uh, 120 days, typically. What I often have is we have like rate specials, which are, if you're buying a house right now today, you can get this rate special. And then we have the rate that you can lock into, which is typically slightly higher than those rate specials. It's just kind of giving the lender some buffer zone in case rates do increase between now and those 120 days. What I always do is do like a rate hold. But then if you come to me within that 120 days and there's a rate special over here, I'm obviously not going to hold you to that higher 120 day rate hold. I'm going to take you over to this special over here and get you that lower rate. Um, One other thing that is kind of nice is that If we have, say, a longer closing, like, you know, 30 days, 60 days, we get your mortgage approved at whatever rate. But if rates continue to come down within that 60 day time frame between when you offer to purchase and when you close, you continue to get that float down rate. You're not 
always stuck with that higher rate. If rates increase, you still get the lower rate. So it's kind of nice. I've had a couple, well, not in 2022, nobody was getting lower than what we thought rates. Um, but over the years, I've had some people where we've committed and then between by the time when we committed to when they closed, their rate came down a couple of times and it's kind of a nice little bonus when you're buying a house. So what are you finding in regards to let's use first time home buyers. Are mm-hmm. they jumping at uh, the 5% or are they trying to go more if they can? 5% down? Yes. I mean, uh, yeah, most people are doing 5%. You don't really benefit putting much. I mean, obviously you benefit, you save interest. If you're looking at say a $300,000 purchase and you have $15,000 down and 20 in your bank account, you're not saving a whole bunch. You're not saving a bunch on CMHC fees. You're obviously, yes, you're obviously saying on interest. Um, by putting that 20 down. But I often say to people, just keep it, keep it, see what comes up with the lawyer, see what comes up at your home inspection, see if you need to do a couple little updates on the house you buy. If you find you don't need that extra $5,000, throw it on your principal. You can still use it. You're not, you're not stuck with not getting to put it on your mortgage, but you don't save a whole lot up front by putting, you know, that little bit more down. Obviously, if people have 20%, you definitely should put 20% down. You'll save money all day long. Your rate might be a little bit different than a first, like than a 5% down payment, but over the course of the life of your mortgage, if you have 20% down, that's definitely still a way to go if you can swing it. And I'm going to put you on a spot for something here because I see this a lot. Nope, not math. (laughs) Okay. We we get people. And when I say people, I get investors that Mm -hmm. they watch what's happening in the U S and they're like, Oh, I can do that in Canada. But it's completely, not 100% completely different, but different in, in general. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to throw this at you. We see in the US, someone buys a house. Oh, mm-hmm. interest rates change. They refinance, pull out the equity. Then they refinance mm-hmm. again. Then they refinance mm-hmm. again and refine. And they're they're basically going one property, two property, three property, four properties. And they only ever had to put in a little bit down because they're constantly keep refinancing. Right. Can you or can you not do that in Canada? Like you can theoretically however what so let's use canada so in ontario in the last three years you could totally do it because our housing prices skyrocketed in lloydminster nope our housing prices did not skyrocket you can only refinance up to 80 percent of the value of your home in canada so in order to continue refinancing not only do you have to be paying down a ton of principal after you've refinanced your property value needs to continually go up by a lot, right, to continue to go back to that 80% value. That's why the whole, um, like, take this right now, but refinance when it's lower in three years, Warren Buffett, is it Warren Buffett that always says that? It doesn't work in our local market. It just doesn't because we don't have, which I think is a good thing that we don't have those, like, wild swings in pricing. We experienced wild springs uh, pricing in 2014, and it wasn't fun. It, like yeah. it really wasn't. It's not fun to, as a buyer, to walk into a house, get to see it once and have to decide if you want to buy it right now because there's four other people behind you. It's not fun when six months later, that house is worth 50 grand less than you paid for it. So I like the stability of our market. But yeah, we don't do a lot of refinances here because the equity just isn't here. So. And I didn't mean to burst people's balloon by mm-hmm. uh, by doing that, but it, it, it's questions that I get hit up on every week. Mm-hmm. People read stuff in the media. They see courses they can take online. And yes, theoretically, it looks great, but it's buying properties without money that you mm-hmm. don't have. Mm-hmm. And you're right. If, if the market's going up, it can work. But if not, you could be definitely doom and gloom and be in a rough spot. Yeah. Sure. And I think that that has happened in a lot of markets out east, probably some out west. I mean, likely they'll rebound some, but I think a lot of markets out East probably are running into kind of what happened in Lloydminster where I don't know that we'll ever get back to the height of what we were at at one point. We were kind of back there last summer a little bit, but I think it's probably come down slightly. Like I was just look at what my house could have sold for, would sell for, and I don't think we're quite back to what, what the height ever really was. No, we are still, um, we're still about fifteen percent away from uh, mm-hmm. where the height was. So yeah, some people did lose a little bit, but that is you only lose that, if you sell, though, right? That's right. So I know I've always heard like, well, my house used to be worth well, yeah, cool, my house used to be worth four fifty two. It's not, but unless I real like, unless I sold at that price and realized that 
in my pocket, it was never money that I had. So I didn't lose anything. I never paid four fifty for my house. So I never had that, right? It's kind of imaginary. Yeah. Now you mentioned people are going for the three, uh, basically mm-hmm. the three years. Um, yeah. Would that be their... They're hedging their bets that the market is going to have a bit of a, a shift here in the next few years. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's sort of, and especially, I mean, now five-year fixed rates are better than what they were, but for a while, five-year fixed rates weren't really attractive. A couple of lenders came out with some of uh, some really nice three-year rate specials that were like an easier pill to swallow, I will say. And yeah, people just kind of hedging their bets that we will have some type of change. And I mean, I can't imagine we don't end up in a recession. So I I think everybody kind of feels like that's happening and coming. And so, yeah, they're just kind of hedging their bets. I do have some people who are like, hell no, lock me into the longest five year. You get the best five year you can. We are in trouble. But yeah, I I would say like probably 80% of my desk book right now is doing three year rates. Well, I remember about a year ago, we were having a chat similar to this and I was asking you what's better at that time. It was, you said variable rates favored more people than fixed rates. Now mm-hmm. you're saying the fixed rates are, f- are favoring pe- people more over the variable. Mm-hmm. But again, I, I suppose it does depend on uh, the applicant themselves, right? And what their situation is. Totally. Of course. Um, and, and it totally does. I still, I do have some people like, no, it doesn't always make sense to take a variable, but I do have some people who still want to do it depending on what they're doing. Um, If you're up for renewal and your lender is offering you not a great rate, but you want to sell in the year, the next year and a half, depending on what they're offering for a one or two year term, a variable still isn't a bad idea because the penalty on the variable is still only three months interest. I mean, that's obviously higher than that was six months ago or a year ago, but it, it really does depend on each individual situation, right? The thing about taking a variable rate mortgage is it's a wave. And like last year, it was awesome. You were, you know, riding that wave at one and a quarter percent interest. Now, obviously, it's not that anymore, but it's a five year span. Like, let's, it's going to do this a little bit. Has it done what it did in the last year historically? No. Was that a little bit of a shock? Yes. But I uh, really like peaked and valleyed. And yeah, it's, um, it, it's really dependent per person, right? On yeah. what their, yeah, what their long-term plans are. What would be your best advice for a first-time home buyer right now heading into the spring market? Oh, definitely shop for rates. There are a couple lenders right now that are like literally not open for business. Like, I mean, obviously the building is open for business, but their rates are not open for business right now. They are out to lunch. Um, So just because you bank there and that's where you've always banked, do your homework, research some things, see what is out there because there is a very big discrepancy between rates. There are other lenders right now that are super open for business. And even if they give you one rate and then you find something better, they're going to come back and like match that plus some. So, um, I mean, banks make money (laughs) off of lending you money and some people want to be lending money right now. And some people don't want to be lending money right now. So definitely, definitely like probably for one of the first times in my career, has there been this big of a discrepancy? Like usually we're, you know, within five to 10 basis points of each other rate wise, but like there are some banks right now that are a whole percent higher than others. And it's definitely, as you mentioned, shopping, you, people mm-hmm. have to shop. Don't be uh don't be lazy. 120 day rate hold is uh fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. That's pretty, least- it's pretty standard. Yeah. Yeah. And it gives you something that you can can work with. Mm-hmm. Well, as always, thanks for joining me and uh, educating everybody. I just helped mm-hmm. uh, show them houses, buy the homes, and uh, then I pass them on to uh, folks such as yourself to get them the money that they need at the mm-hmm. best rate they possibly can get. Mm-hmm. And yeah, hopefully we can do that. I did do some math while we were chatting to double check my $200,000. So 2% at $200,000 purchase, you're paying $846 a month. And at 4.89 today, you'd be paying 11.50. So I wasn't far off in my 400 bucks guess. See, you do it enough that it uh, it's all up here and you're, you're good to go. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like, I think that's because it was a $200,000 purchase. It was <laughs> easier math for me, but I wasn't far off. So you can keep that in there. We try to keep the math simple and uh, within the median price. As always, thanks yeah. for joining me. And, yeah, thanks uh, for having me. Dude. We will uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, sounds good.